Hey guys, so I did mention that I was gonna do a third video on bed leveling where I'm gonna actually attempt to calibrate the machine itself rather than using shims or some other hacky method. But after filming the whole process, it doesn't look like the bed's warped in a way where it's like a plain slanted, rather it's like a U shape where the center of the bed actually appears higher than the outsides or possibly the gantry is actually lower in the middle than the outsides. But it's a lot better than the state that I initially got the machine. At first, there was a difference of about 0.254 millimeters, which is over one layer height. I've dropped that down to about 0.17 millimeters, which is almost a full layer height, but it is better than what I got it in. So I will be in contact with support, trying to figure out what's this U shape in my gantry or in the bed. Without further ado, let's jump over to the printer and check out the process. Okay, so when we're leveling our bed, we need a dial indicator attached to the extruder head over here in order to figure out the flatness of our bed. So we're gonna go over here to the control panel and click on the move option so that we can move left and right, front and back with the X, Y commands. So looking at the dial indicator as I move to the left. So right now we're at around uh, the 95 mark. And this is in thousandths of an inch. So in the center here, what happens at when it moves to the uh, clockwise position, this means the center is raised by about five thou. As we continue over, we can see that's starting to drop now. And then all of a sudden it kind of drops off a cliff down to about 86 on the far left side. So it seems like the bed is actually warped in this sort of manner, in like an arc. So on the right side, it's low, in the center it's high, but on the left side it's even lower. However, when we move back and forth on the y-axis, so right now you can see it's at around 86 there. And if we move backwards, the needle's barely moving. Just for sanity check there, that to make sure the needle didn't actually come off the surface, let's do this again. So Y is going to come forwards. And we get about 3 thou of difference, which is, I'll fill the number or the conversion to millimeters on the screen. Now, if you continue moving on the Y axis over here, forwards, meaning in this direction here, you can actually get the step promoter to jam. So you wanna make sure that you don't go too far and hit the limits. Now, if we again use the X axis and jog it to the right, you can see that, wow, there's a lot of run out over there. And it comes back to about 11, jogging back over. We got to about 16, and then we drop back down to about zero. That's just the needle coming off here, so let's try that again. So we're at zero, jogging over to the right. We get about 16, 17 thou. And then when we finally end up at home position, we're out by 11 thou. So if I pull the needle up, that means we're going in the positive or clockwise direction, meaning that this side is raised by 0.25 millimeters more than this side. But because the Y axis back and forth is actually fairly flat, and we can just show you on the right side to see how flat it is. You can see it runs out by about 2 thou, and then that's about it. So I'm gonna actually believe that this plate is flat here, but what's wrong is in the gantry setup. So what I need to do right now is to raise the center because the center is a little bit low. It's sagging down like this. So what I wanna do is possibly tighten these bolts to be able to tension the rods so that they remain as straight as possible. So let me try that. Okay, so I did try to tighten up these screws, but it didn't seem to fix the problem because I'm going back and forth right now. And I'm still seeing the center point being high and the sides being lower. So right now that's kind of the state of this gantry setup. And what I think I need to do is to actually take this left side and lower it, but keep the right side the same. And to do that, we kind of have to go up into the top over here. These are the two lead screws here and they're connected by a belt. So what we're gonna to need to do is to take this right side, hold it steady, while the left side has its screw twisted counterclockwise, which is down as I've indicated over here. Now the tricky part of doing this and why I probably wouldn't recommend you to do it is because what really matters is this screw versus this screw in relationship to the belt. So if you hold the screw steady and turn the screw downwards and have the belt loose, when you try to go and put back the belt on, you need to make sure that the, 
that the length of belt from here to here is pre-tensioned wrapping around both without either of these screws moving. If you got two people, it makes it a lot easier because you can have one person hold this screw over here and the other person will adjust this belt. And then when the person's done adjusting this belt, you have the first person hold both these screws while the second person just wraps the belt around the two without having these two move relative to each other. One more thing I forgot to mention is in order to get the belt loose, what you're gonna have to do is take these two screws off and then this pre-tensioner pre just slides right out and the belt becomes completely loose. Note that there's a stepper motor over here and it's probably ideal if you remove this connector to the stepper motor so that as you twist the belt, you won't have the stepper motor move and therefore feed current into the system. To do so, you wanna make sure you're not pulling on the wires, but you wanna pull on the connector itself and I guess there's two small, very small tabs. You should be able to grip onto the sides and just pull it out. But it can be a little bit finicky, so maybe you wanna use the unclogging tool and maybe sort of like wedge your way out, or you can try to take a pair of pliers or tweezers. Make sure to also turn off the power to your printer while doing this. So the pretensioner is loose right now, and now I'm gonna to try to adjust the belt. Perhaps I can try to get a better camera angle so that you guys can see what's going on. Now I've also done something over here. I've disconnected the stepper motor. You can see that white connector right over here, just hanging loose. And that's again, so that as we're driving the stepper motor manually, just pushing this gantry head, that way we don't back feed some current through the wire into the main board and fry something. Okay, so right now I'm gonna go down into the gantry and just slide it back and forth to just make sure that the state of my gantry is still bent right now. So we're gonna be raising this right side over here. How I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna hold this left side here, hold the right side and let go of the tensioner. So what's gonna happen now is the belt becomes all loose, as you can see. So I'm going to raise the right side. So to raise the right side, I'm gonna do maybe one or two ticks Nowhere close to a full turn. Then I've got to take my fingers and tension the belt again, and then I'm gonna hold the belt with my finger rather than use the tensioner. So now again, I'm gonna come back down here. I'm gonna come back down here, move the gantry back and forth. So move it back and forth and just check the levelness. So it looks like we're off by a bit more. We've got about 10 thou on this right side and it goes to about 25 thou. So we're off by about 15 thou. It looks like this side is lower by 15 thou than this side. So I need to bring this side up even more and you can see how it's finicky, I actually made it worse. Okay, so I think I got it good. I actually found a new technique while doing that. So what I would do is I would hold the left side over here and then on the right side what I would do is that I would still keep a bit of tension in the belt along this side over here, but then I just wanna see how many teeth I'm letting slip. So basically what I'm doing is letting the, I'm gonna be turning this pulley over here, uh, turning it clockwise to raise this axis, and then just count how many teeth slip past it. So you wanna keep a bit, you wanna keep tension here, but not so much that the teeth are digging into the pulley but you want to let the teeth slide through the pulley and figure out how many teeth slide. That time I let two teeth slide and it seemed to manage to get me back to level. So once you do that, you want to bring back the tensioner. And here we're going to tighten everything up. Now one thing is you don't want to crank this bolt because it's only like an M3 or an M2 and a half, I think. So just give it a decent tighten just so that like maybe with my two fingers, I'm just applying enough pressure so that it doesn't twist. And the goal of these bolts is just to hold the tensioner in place. You don't really need to crank those bolts. So let me bring the camera a little bit closer. So you can see I've marked the bolts with some silver Sharpie. The marking is right over there. So before you loosen them, just make a marking with Sharpie using a silver Sharpie. Then that will tell you how much you should turn the bolts and you don't want to go past the mark where the two uh, the two marks line up, the one mark on the screw and the one mark on the part. All right, so coming back down over here, you can see that the gantry on the left side sits at around 22. So as I'm pushing it over, you can see that it's increasing in the center, but this time it only goes up to about 26 or so in the center. 
and then we come back down all the way to I don't go even that far. I would say I'd go to about there, and that's about home position. So we've got 20 thou on the right side, 22 thou on the left side, meaning that there's a difference of 2 thou. And I'll throw up the millimeter measurement up on the screen because I don't really know it off the top of my head. So basically, that's how I level my bed. The first time I tried this, it wasn't very successful, so I kind of gave up and just used shims. The reason why I wanted to do this again is because I found the bed was possibly moving due to the shims. When you have the magnetic plate, so the plate goes on top of the bed and you add more distance between the plate and the bed, then the magnetic force actually weakens because of the distance. So by adding shims, it weakens the magnetic strength against the build plate. And when the magnetic strength is weakened, then your print bed is more susceptible to any sort of like jittering movements during the print and causing it to move and you'll get some weird layer lines. So I hope you enjoyed this video on how you guys can actually level your bed. And it was a bit of a challenge for me. I've been sitting here for maybe two or three hours fiddling around with it. I'll leave a link in the description if you guys want a dial indicator. I'll also have a print from Thingiverse that fits for my dial indicator. It uses a quarter inch screw to be able to attach to the print. And I'll try to show you that right now. So this is a side profile of my dial indicator. So you can see that I've got a screw coming through this part over here. This is a screw over there. And it just screws into this piece, which I've actually removed my fan shroud in order to attach it to the extruder head. It's not the sturdiest, which is why I added pieces of tape. One piece of tape that comes from the bottom and tapes up over here. And then another one taping from side to side to keep this dial indicator as still as possible. So leave a like if you guys enjoyed this video and subscribe down below for more videos on the Adventure 4. I've thrown up a couple videos on the screen. If you guys are interested in those, you can check them out. If you're there, I'll see you there. If not, that's a wrap, guys.